A lot of people have said to me, isn't it a good idea to have widespread or wide scale testing, whether people have symptoms or they don't have symptoms? It's one tactic. It's not the only one. And it's certainly in this case, not the best one uh, because the test is not readily available. Uh, because there are limits to the, um, the test's availability, the reagent, how quickly the results come back, the sample has to travel. They're, they're just logistical and supply issues around um, testing. Um, so so uh, the testing strategy that we have right now, and remember things are, are changing, is to look at special risk groups, like who, who's going to be especially um, hurt or how will society be especially hurt if um, certain people get uh, COVID-19? So um, our older members, um, healthcare workers, because we need them, we can't afford to have them lost to quarantine or even to, to get sick. Um, special risk populations, people with um, certain illnesses or immunosuppression, um, certain marginalized groups of the population can do badly because they're already doing badly. So when they get COVID, they can do uh, especially badly. Um, but on top of that, um, we, we have to control the resource. We can't just spend and spend and spend because we're going to need tests, not just today, but next week and next month and the month after that and the month after that. We, we have to be careful. And also, um, the honest truth is, is that 95% 95 of people who are COVID positive um, in this province will ride it out at home. Like they, they'll, they'll have mild enough an illness that they don't need to go to emerge. They don't need to go to a hospital. They don't need to be in an ICU. They just will be quarantining themselves um, in their homes. And for most of us who are able-bodied, that's not much at all. People are already quarantining themselves or self-isolating right now just to protect themselves or to protect others.